Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the CrossFit Lynchpin Private Track. Ask me anything for our Facebook group every Thursday. Members submit questions, other members upvote them, and the most popular ones get answered live each week. So here we go. I'm ready. I'm all good to go. The first most upvoted question is from Jen R. She says, so can you now, now is in all caps, by the way, so can you now tell us what the post-it notes that used to be on your wall were for? Was it the Cascade programming, Cascade Classic programming, we need answers, etc. So all those, I don't have them anymore. I took them down, uh, mostly, even though they were nice for organizational purposes. My wife thought they looked very ugly on the wall. So, you know, got to keep the household happy. Um, they were me organizing in my head and visually different topics and chapters and subsections for like a programming document I've been working on for a really long time because it's it takes a really long time to do it right. I don't know if I want to call it a how-to program because there's not just one way, but just my thoughts, my two cents, my lessons learned after doing it for so long. Um, so if we do have programmers out there, younger programmers looking to you know get into it and, and take it really seriously and do it well, that they don't have to go through the same stumbling blocks that I did. Now, you, you still have to go through your stumbling blocks. There's no way to avoid, you know, learning and making it like that's just going to happen. But there are just some things that I wish I had known to get on track a little bit sooner. And I don't know when I will release that document. I don't want to do it until it's in my mind as close to perfect as possible, but it may never be perfect. And so then I may never release it. So I'm trying to juggle all of that of, you know, get it to where I'm happy with it, maybe put it out there. And then if I see something that, you know, I wish I had done a little bit different or polished a bit more, that we, you know, then I could, you know, polish it or make it version two or version three or update whatever it happens to be and all that stuff. So not a book, you know, but just a a programming document guide, if you will. So that's what they that's what they were, Jen. I was trying to just make sure that the flow made sense and all that good stuff. And when you see it visually, I could see was I leaving anything out or you know, blah blah blah. So that's all it was. Okay. The next most upvoted was from Michelle M. Michelle, where is your comment? Where are you? Here we go. Okay. All right. So basically, the comment is from Michelle's husband. Michelle's relating it for him. So Michelle and her husband are both Lynchpin members, but Michelle is on the Facebook page and her husband is not. So his question is, basically... Do I program certain things or not program certain things, aka modify the programming based upon what you could say it would do to attendance? And so what we mean by that is uh, most people aren't really happy when Run a 5K gets programmed. Most people are really happy when DT gets programmed. And so if you want a lot of participation in what you're doing, whether it's people showing up to your class, likes on Instagram, well, you're going to get a lot more people in your class and a lot more likes on Instagram posting DT than posting run a boring 5K. And so does that affect how I program, you know, things that are popular or not, things that will get more or less uh, participation or not? things that will be better received or not? Does that affect the workouts that I write? Because her husband says he's aware of other coaches that have answered this question that yes, you know, it absolutely does drive what they do. Uh, I will make it very simple. My answer is a firm and unwavering no. None of that affects what I program in any way, shape, or form, quite frankly, and not to be callous and not to be not empathetic to other human beings, because hopefully I've demonstrated that I actually care greatly, and I am empathetic, 
but I don't care if nobody wants to run a 5K. Doesn't bother me in the least. I'm going to program what I know works and what we have to do. And then the onus is on the individual to execute or not. But then that's that's their call, not mine. One of the phrases and sayings that we have at Lynchpin that is not just uh, an empty catchphrase is that we do what is effective, not what's popular. And that is the 100% God's honest truth. We do what is necessary. And to do anything else personally with regards to programming, I would consider that I was doing everybody a disservice and I would not sleep well at night. That makes me, I can't even, honestly, I can't even wrap my head around doing, doing something like that. I can't, I can't even imagine being like, well, look, got this really effective workout. It's really what people need to do. It's a definite hole in their game, but geez, it's just not going to be super popular. So, eh, you know, let's just not do it. I can't even wrap my head around that decision, quite frankly. So no, we don't do that at all. We do. I mean, just look through Lynchpin, just take a scroll through what we program and you will see that we program, just like I said, what's effective. We care very little about what's popular. If you can hear a baby screaming in the background, that's my daughter. She has colic. She's seven weeks old. She's potentially possessed by the devil. When she no longer has colic, She will most likely be a more enjoyable human being and a quieter human being. But right now, we're in the trenches. We are in the trenches. So when you hear that little wailing in the background, that's my wife right now, God bless her, dealing with some sort of chaos from a little human being that's just as angry as a hornet. Gets up in the morning, angry as a hornet. Goes to bed at night, angry as a hornet. One day it shall pass, but not right now. Okay, back to back to Michelle's question. I mean, we're talking. People don't generally like to do sprinting. You want to you want to post a day that people aren't going to want to do. Do ten by one hundred meter repeats, eight by two hundred meter, six by four hundred meter, three by eight hundred meter. You know, death by ten meter shuttle sprints, death by calories in the assault bike, run, row, or bike for thirty minutes. We program that stuff all the time. Uh, dumbbell thrusters generally aren't warmly received by the public, but I'm here to tell you, they make people into beasts. Uh, what else do we have? Strict gymnastics work. Also not popular. Very effective. We like the strict stru- strict stuff as well as kipping. Work your L-sit. If there's a set of parallettes in the gym to work your L-sit, there's never a line at the parallettes. You can always hop on there and work your L-sit because nobody wants to do it. And everybody should reprogram that stuff. So period, end of story. No, we do what works. And I, you know, in my mind, it's kind of what sets us apart from a lot of other things out there. And that was one of the big things when I created Lynchpin, that was one of the driving forces and mission statements was I wanted to do what I thought was like, let's do it right. And whoever decides to come along, they'll come along. And those who don't and just want to, cherry pick workouts or whatnot, well, that's on them. That's not on me. But if we're going to program what works and then people decide to blow off the things that aren't necessarily popular, so to speak, well, they can only be upset with themselves when their fitness isn't at the level that they want it to be. It's on their shoulders. So, um, yeah, I would say, I would say that's kind of that. And what I find interesting about this is because it does happen, right, with some programming out there. Boggles my mind, but it does happen. It doesn't pass the sniff test in anything else in life, and it shouldn't in fitness either. I mean, could you, if you really want to be fit, you've got to do the stuff that works. Period. End of story. If you want to be the best. I mean, imagine a top performer in sport or industry or anything really, just somebody who wants to be a top performer, wants to wants to push it forward. And they're saying, yeah, you know, I really want to be the best in my sport, in my industry, in my whatever it happens to be. But, you know, I don't really want to do what's required. I don't really want to do 
the grindy, not sexy grunt work that moves the needle. I just kind of want to do the fun stuff. What Will I be really successful? Everybody would immediately be like, no, you crazy. Like, you've, you've got to do that other stuff. You've, you've got to put in the work, even if some of it's not fun. If you really want to achieve these goals that you're setting for yourself, it just doesn't make any sense. So athletes in the old CrossFit gym are no different, right? I get it. I get it. You know, the fundamentals are boring. Nobody wants to do the fundamentals. They want to just, you know, do the the flashy stuff all the time. But it's not really, it's not really what works. And it's our job as leaders or coaches or trainers or business owners or whatever it happens to be that if you really do want to help your people, in my opinion anyway, that's part of being a leader is the answer is not always a, a yes, okay, yep, let's do the fun. Like you have to sometimes be like, no, I understand that you don't want to do that, but no, we're not going to do that silly stuff. We're going to do this. We're going to go to the track and we're going to do repeats because they work. And it's the same deal with like my my young boy's football team. If If the football team only did what the players wanted to do that was the fun stuff and they didn't want to do the grinding out of the fundamentals, I don't think they'd have a very good football team when it came time for game day. So I'm here to tell you, I know what all the kids want to do. What do you guys want to do today? You want to work on like blocking and tackling and passing and just boring fundamentals? Or do you want to work on like one-handed catches into the end zone while you dive that happen like one out of every 1,000 plays? All the kids would be like, yes, that's what we want to do every single day of practice. You're not going to have a winning team if you do that. You've got to do the other stuff. You've got to do what's effective, not necessarily what's popular. So it was probably a much longer answer to that than it was needed, but I thought it was, a, it was an excellent question. So, Michelle, that's it. I mean, we could go down another. I mean, take diet as well, right? You can't let people just eat what they want to eat. <laughs> you wouldn't. Most people would not skyrocket their health and fitness in a good direction. You, they're, you've got to do what works. You've got to do what works. So that's what we do at Lynchpin. Okay. The next question was from Rory S. Rory, where are you? Let's see. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Okay, here we go. Rory asks, maybe you've answered this before, but could you list two or three of your go-to meals when you're short on time? Lynchpin's meant for busy people with real lives. So what are your three go-to meals when life gets busy? Okay, first of all, life's never been busy, you know? We're just chilling. Every minute of every hour of every day, it's just easy living here, just a cool breeze. No, that's obviously a ferocious lie, as you hear my baby wailing in the background. So, oh, oh. I thought, I thought the baby was moving in this direction. I didn't know what was going to occur, so I paused. But I think that was a, a false, a false attack. Okay, Rory, here we go. I'll cover a couple of breakfasts, a couple of lunches, and then a couple of dinners. So for breakfast, my go-to is actually quite simple and fast every day: scrambled eggs and then a piece of fruit. You know, I eat five or six scrambled eggs every day. Some days I put some cheese in there. You know what I mean? It's all good. It's all good, you know, for me anyway. Maybe it takes a year off my life. I like my cheese every now and then, my eggs. So I do five or six scrambled eggs, and then a banana, some grapes, some strawberries, and whatever we happen to have there. I've probably had my coffee when I get up, so I just drink water with the breakfast, and it doesn't take much time at all to scramble those eggs. The banana's just, boom, instantly done. Now let's be real for a second. You're out and about. You're going to get breakfast on the go in your car somewhere. You know, at least here in the United States, I can't speak for other countries, uh, you know, maybe I can make a better choice, but hey, we're being real with each other. We're all friends here. We're being real. I'll swing through the Starbucks drive through and they make those little egg bites. You know, one order of egg bites gets you two egg bites. So I'll usually get two orders of egg bites. They've got some that are egg whites, some that have some chopped up vegetables in them. Some have chopped up bacon in them. Those are obviously the most delicious. And I'll get a couple orders of egg bites. And if they happen to have an apple or a banana or something like that, grab that. Good to go. So that's a quick, easy, fast breakfast on the go. For lunches, 
And again, speaking here in the United States, we've got a big wholesale place called Costco. And there's a Costco near us, so you know, we stock up with some food from Costco. And one of the things they have at Costco, which is great, I'm sure you can get in other places, these already cooked basically chicken skewers. And so I'll have chicken skewers just in the fridge, ready to grab, instant, done, fast, easy, healthy. And we've got some mayonnaise. I'm trying to remember who makes it right now, but it's avocado mayonnaise. It's just it's just avocado, so it's good to go. And I'll put a little avocado mayonnaise on those chicken skewers. It takes two seconds, fast, done, easy. We usually have meat or something for dinner, and you know, we usually make more than we need, so we have leftovers. So there's usually some chicken or steak or burgers or whatever in the fridge as leftovers. And so I can I can also just grab the appropriate amount of that leftover meat and I'll have that with my lunch. And then again, some fruits or vegetables or something on the side, water with that, a little you know, bubbly water or something, and good to go. And that's pretty quick. Again, if I'm traveling, it might not be ideal, but it's real. Swing into a grocery store and from the grocery store, I can walk up to the deli get some chicken salad. Now I know the chicken salad that they make at the grocery store isn't gonna have that wonderful avocado mayonnaise that I just said I use at home. They're gonna have some sort of, you know, death mayonnaise with probably trans fat in it or some sort of nuclear waste product. I get that. I don't eat it regularly, but every now and then when I'm in a pinch, it's probably better for me getting that than go and getting like a foot long sub somewhere. So I would get chicken salad from the deli Walk over to the fruit section, get some blueberries or something or grapes to sprinkle in there. Awesome. Done. Get a water on the way out. Solid. From the deli, I could also just get a, you know, a half pound or something of some sort of sliced up, all natural, organic, you know, deli turkey or something like that. Walk out with that with some fruit, et cetera, et cetera, and be good to go. Grab an avocado, slice up the avocado, eat the deli turkey and avocado, have some fruit with it. You're rocking. doesn't take long. It's fast. And then if we're talking about dinners, like I said, we usually grill some sort of a meat or fish, and then there'll be leftovers that we eat you know, the, the following day or two for lunch. We can grill a bunch of vegetables. We grill a lot. And sweet potatoes as well are just super easy as well. You know, sauteed broccoli, and just good to go. Fast, quick, and easy like that. And lastly, I would say, especially if you're maybe traveling and you actually are just surrounded by nothing but terrible decisions and it's just for one meal, you can always um, just fast. You can actually just you know skip a meal and fast. So Kelly, I see your, your comment there. I feel attacked. Your comment says, I'm not hearing 800 grams of veggies, coach. That, if my wife was in the room right now, that would be her largest critique as well, is I eat a, I eat very little bread, but I eat a tremendous amount of fruit just because it's so fast, quick, and easy, and I eat some vegetables. But one of the best things I could probably do to my diet personally is to eat more vegetables. Great on the fruit. Great on eating little little processed crap like bread, but I really could use some more veggies in my life. But I do eat bread every now and then. Like I said, who's kidding who? Let's not lie to each other. If somebody cooks up some like carne asada, grilled skirt steak or something like that, and there's some Hawaiian sweet rolls available, you better believe you're going to see not one, but more than one Hawaiian sweet roll on my plate. I'm only human, right? I and mean, what am I supposed to do? So, okay, let's see. Ooh, okay, good. Final two questions here. One is from Matt L. Okay, Matt, here we go. With all the talk of Annie Thor's daughters finish at the games and mom, street, mom strength, etc., the sleeper long shot bet for next year's podium could be our very own Emily Sherwood. The timing seems about right, and it certainly sounds like she hasn't lost her competitive edge. Any chance she gets tired of just beating you in the garage and decides to make a bigger comeback? Excellent question. As a matter of fact, 
I asked her this question. I was like, hey, you were mentioned, you were one of the more upvoted questions. What should I respond to this? And uh, you know, this was while the baby was in her arms. And she basically said, that's very kind, but she has no desire. She has no desire at this, in this season of her life to do what is actually required to go to the games, you know, let's say as a master's athlete, just it's, it's, it's not there. However, she is a lunatic, a wonderful, lovable lunatic. And that's why I married her. She is profoundly competitive. Um, beating me in the gym is far too easy for her. And so I do think one of her goals, and I don't know if I should say this out loud, but I will, and I'll let you know if I get into hot water for saying it, you know, She's already on, on the road to coming back, making good decisions, scaling and all that good stuff. I think what she really wants to do is play it smart. You know, if we're seven weeks out from when she had the baby, keep improving, keep adding intensity, keep adding loading, you know, till she gets back to prescribed, get to the point where she can regularly do the prescribed workouts of the day for linchpin. Once that feels good for her, if she feels up to it, Add in some of the optional accessory work that we program each day. And then with that, just see where that takes her. You know, throw it out in the open just for funsies. Who cares? And, you know, does that actually get her selected to advance to whatever the next step is for a master's and just, you know, just have fun in that online world? If so, great. If not, no worries. There are more important things in life right now. Uh, almost everything, quite frankly, and that's just what will happen. So I think that's I think that's how she's going to play out this year. That would be my goal. Uh, her and I will have a a head to head battle when she feels ready for it in a workout that I chose. Um, whenever she feels like she's back to prescribed, and I'm probably going to get slaughtered. So I'll keep you posted on that, but it'll be fun. Okay, final question, and then we'll do our linchpin shoutouts. I got some more linchpin shoutouts from the group because they're always popular. This is from Matthew S. Matthew S. I'm scanning. I'm scanning. Where are you? Stand by. Where the heck is it? Oh, here we go. Okay. Matthew S. Holidays. <clears throat> or, you know, I think what in the U.S. we would call vacation time. I love the phrase holidays, though. Holidays. When taking a break... How quote unquote bad is it to put working out on hold for let's say a week, considering that during that week one has some activities or sports plans such as hiking, walking a city, surfing, biking, skiing, etc. Would one feel the same effect as one week's rest when walking back into the gym? Okay. Great question, and there's no one answer. So for, first of all, here's my sane, rational, well-rounded, grounded human being answer, right? I would be a raging lunatic to say, oh, you're on vacation, you're on holiday with your family, heck with enjoying the city, the heck with skiing and surfing and all that, you better get your darn workouts in or you're going to be just heading to the grave early. That's preposterous. That's not fun. Nobody wants to live that way. That doesn't make working out enjoyable. So let's not say that. So this, the short, easy answer is, if you're about to go out and enjoy your vacation and have fun, go enjoy your vacation. Pressure-free, stress-free, worry-free. Don't worry about working out. It's just one week of your life. Have fun, right? And you come back into the gym and however hard or whatever it is to get back into the routine, that's okay. You will eventually get back into the routine. It won't take that long. And you've got to enjoy a wonderful decompression of your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit for that one week. That's good for you in the long run. That keeps you sane, keeps you liking to work out. doesn't make it a job that you hate. That being said, if now we talk about somebody like me that, isn't right in the head. I got some issues going on. And I've been very vocal about this. Even on vacation, I have to get something in. Let's say at least three times that week. I got to do something on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Even if it's something small and light and quote unquote easy, 
because for me, I should probably go see a psychiatrist about this, I can't settle and I can't I can't relax until I get in a little bit of physical activity that falls into my category of working out, even if it's light and easy working out. And I know that obviously skiing and hiking and biking and surfing are all physical activities, but in my mind, they're funsies and they're different than working out. And this, again, this is just my clinical issues. Nobody else should feed off of these. And so for me, like, for example, my family went to Disney before the pandemic, so whatever that was, like 17 years ago. You know, and when we were at Disney, we were going to go out walking for, you know, 10, 12 hours. A lot of that I was going to wind up probably carrying our younger son. So I was going to do like a 40 pound carry for 10 hours. So there's plenty of physical activity that was going to go on. But in my mind, I had to do something. So about 15 minutes before the family left the hotel room, I just did 50 burpees. That's it. Nothing crazy. 50 burpees. It took whatever it took, you know, between three and four minutes. Done. No warm up, no cool down, no nothing. I think I did that same thing on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Again, everything taking less than five minutes. Just knowing that I did that took no time, but it just makes me now feel like, okay, I got something in. Let's go enjoy the day. Sometimes I wish I wasn't wired like that, but I am wired like that. And so I think it just depends upon where you fall in that spectrum of crazy behavior. But my answer to normal normal people is enjoy your vacation and don't feel any pressure to, to do something unless you actually want to. So that's that. Okay. Let's end with three of the shout outs from the Lynchpin private tracks are just cool things that I screenshot that catch my attention in the Facebook group. And then we share. So this one was from Catherine L. This was a while ago. And it was a workout we had. It was half Murph is actually what was posted. And I entitled this one scaling and listening to your body. And she says moderate intensity today. The runs were a 1k because that's the loop that I have around the block. The body weight movements I partitioned into five sets of 10, 30, 10, 20, and 30. Did the push-ups on my knees because that's what felt good. Did reverse lunges instead of air squats because it treated her right knee better. And just a great start to the week. So I love that. Scaled, modified the workout in a way that made sense. Fitness was achieved. No need to stress about it. That's a home run. Next thing, from a well-known person in the private group, Rick H. He's got a cool photo of his son on a bike on this one. This was again from a while ago. Rick says, haven't worked out in a week. My back was giving me some fits. Listen to your body, everybody. And life was giving me fits. Those are self-inflicted. <clears throat> Just basically an awful week all around. Hey, that's real life, right? It's not all sunshine and rainbows. I decided my back felt loose enough today to do the no equipment option. I was ready to shut it down if anything didn't feel okay, but I just moved nice, slow, and controlled. Then ended with a two-mile that was more of a jog than a run. Had to push, uh, had to pace, had a, a pace bike with his son on the bike to push me a bit. Took time to cool down and stretch. It was some semblance of fitness, just trying to get back on track. What I love about that is, again, we're big fans of real life here at Lynchpin. And scaling is cool. And if you have to modify the workout in some way, shape, or form due to how your body feels, stress at work, didn't sleep well, duties with the kids, whatever it happens to be, whatever responsibilities you have in your life, you're good to go. You're always authorized to do that. And in the long run, you're going to win. Okay, this final one is cool. I wish you could see the photo that I'm seeing. So this is from Lita P. And... Lita posts a photo um, with her uncle, an older gentleman, and there's a photo of him. He looks fantastic. He's 88 years old. So she says, I haven't worked out since Monday because after months of planning, I finally convinced my 88-year-old uncle to take a trip to the beach with me. On top of being mostly home during this pandemic, he lost his brother and his nephew. He's been telling me stories of when he was a kid living down by the shore, so I planned a special trip. 
His mobility is poor, so I borrowed a wheelchair to get him around. I also rented a tandem bike so we could ride on the boardwalk. He says he feels incredible being back at the beach. I learned yesterday that he hasn't been to the beach since 1969. He couldn't get over how much it has changed. Anyway, thanks, Lynchpin, for getting me to a point where I can bike 10 miles with me doing all of the cycling and be able to push a 175-pound man around in a wheelchair. Fitness was most definitely achieved and so grateful for a body that makes all of this functional movement happen. How cool is that? I mean, if that's not what it's all about, I don't know what it is. So that's it. Uh, of course, it's a rest day for almost everybody. I encourage you to take it. The Dead and Dubs competition, the challenge from BTWB is, is happening effective tomorrow. So enjoy that. And I will see you on the interwebs.